All right, friends, we are in uh, Simon's detail today, and today we are talking about wheels and buffers. Uh, we're talking about wheels on a car, but not buffer as in buffing machine. We're talking buffers as in what it takes to get a alkaline or acid back to neutral, back to a pH level of seven. So this is what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna go through here, so this is uh, one of my wheels from my WRX uh, that uh, I just bought earlier this summer comes with uh, these uh, summertime sport tires so I swapped out to the winter setup so I'm gonna go ahead and take this opportunity to uh, clean up these and show you guys our kind of wheels off process and how we're gonna work from least aggressive to most aggressive to get this thing back to looking new because even though these are only six months old these have 8,000 miles on them so they're already pretty tired and honestly I didn't do anything with them to begin with so we're gonna get these cleaned up and we're gonna get these protected so that way next summer I'm ready to go so uh, let's get to work all right so as you know best practices always call for we start at the least aggressive solution and we ramp up our aggression so what's the least aggressive thing we can do water so all I'm doing here is I'm trying to knock off any sort of loose contaminants, brake dust, you know, anything that I can get off now because if I can get it off now, I'm not rubbing it all over the place and grinding it into the finish later on. So simply power wash off the face and now I'm going to get to the barrel. Now I don't want to set it down on the face. I don't want to scratch the face. So I'm just going to kind of roll the wheel. and try to knock off as much as this I can knock off. So we got off what we wanted there and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to foam it up. So again we're going to ramp up our aggression here and we're going to get some foamy soap on there if it doesn't roll away on me which is why I have towels. So I'm going to foam this up don't need a great deal. Gonna get the face. Oh, there, now we're talking. Let's pick it up on top. There we go. And like everything, guys, dwell time. You know, give it some time. This is a cleanser. This is breaking down contaminants. So I'm in no great rush to dive in there and start agitating right away. So. I will give that some dwell time, but I am going to grab a wheel brush and I like to start with the face, give it once around here and then again get back to the barrel and the back side of the spokes. And I'm not getting real crazy with any sort of pressure here. I'm getting off whatever I can get off because I know later I can follow with more aggressive chemicals. I got, you know, wheel cleanser, I got brake dust remover, I got other tools in my belt, so to speak, that I can go to so I don't need to sit here and try to muscle out everything with my wheel brush and some body wash. All right. Now that we've agitated, we're going to go ahead, give her a rinse. Make sure I got the barrel too. Again, I'm not going to lay it face side down because I don't want to chance damaging the finish on the face of the wheel. So I'll go ahead and just give the barrel a little hose out. Make sure I got all this soap out of there, all the, how to, all the nooks and crannies and whatnot. And then let's get this bad boy back in the clean room and ramp up our aggression of cl cleaning this to get this thing looking new again. All right, so we're back in the Dr. Beasley's uh, clean room. And as you can see, work here never stops. So even for video shoots, we keep on turning the work out. So anyway, back to the Subaru wheel. So the next thing we're gonna do is have a look and inspect them so we can know what kind of contaminants we're dealing with so we can anticipate the rest of our process. So I can tell you just by looking at the wheel right now, it is painfully obvious that it is not coated. There is water just glued to this thing. It's not pushing off water at all. So first off, yeah, obviously I know it's not coated because it's my car, but just by looking at it, you can tell it's not coated. 
but overall pretty clean. I'm not seeing a great deal of uh, brake dust build up, even in the little wells for the lug nuts. I'm not seeing a lot there. So this should be pretty straightforward on the front side. I'm thinking wheel cleanser and we should be pretty much ready to go on the face side of the wheel. But if we kind of turn it around and we look inside the barrel, we're gonna have some more challenges in here. So, one of the major things I'm seeing here are some spots that were, I'm guessing, uh, either my wife or I drove through some freshly paved asphalt and must have kicked it up because I have these little tar-covered rocks kind of fused to the inside of the barrel. So obviously they kicked up and then centrifugal force pushed them in there and kind of, you know, really set them in there. So this is something that's going to take some more aggression to get off. You know, will it come off with our wheel cleanser or intensive brake dust remover? We're going to give it a shot and we're going to see. But my feeling is, is we're going to have to ramp up that aggression to something a little bit more powerful. So let's get started. All right, so I always like to start with the barrel. So I always figure let's start with the barrel and then flip over to the face of the wheel and finish off on that because obviously that is the forward facing part. So I always want that to look best. So again, that's why I like to start with the barrel. So. Uh, as far as order of aggression, so about one of the least aggressive things we could use is our prep wash. It's 100% uh, inorganic formulation, basically typically used for uh, preparation of a paint correction. But again, if we're going to start least aggressive to most aggressive, you know, we'll give it a shot. So we can give prep wash. Here's our contaminant right there, which is that asphalt that's stuck in there. That's pretty much what I, the biggest problem with this wheel, besides a little bit of brake dust stuck into these little insets here. Uh, but we can go ahead and give the prep wash a shot, see what happens, and as expected, not much change. So again, we're going to ramp up the aggression. So now we're going here to uh, uh, the premium wheel cleanser. So this is a alkaline uh, um, uh, product. It is a water-based cleanser though. So again, we're going to give a spray here, and I'm going to go over the whole wheel because like I said, it's not horribly dirty, but I want to get a good clean on there everywhere around because I am going to be coating this wheel. So we want a substrate that is close to virgin finished paint as possible. So put down my wheel cleanser there, grab one of my clean towels. I always do like to give it a little bit of dwell time. Again, give your tool an opportunity to work. If you spray it or immediately wiping, you're not giving it a chance to break down the chemicals or break down the contaminants rather. So again, give it a wipe. And, you know, we've definitely cleaned it up. We've gotten a lot of that kind of looser contaminants off. A lot of that kind of road grime has come off, but I'm still seeing some signs of brake dust. Most of the brake dust that was stuck in these insets on the back side of these spokes has actually come off. So that's pretty impressive for a wheel cleanser. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a nice job for that product right there. Points for that. But uh, again, you know, nice job definitely. Uh, and I'm not sitting here and put a great deal of force. Again, I'm letting the tool do the job for me. I'm not sitting here trying to jam the stuff in because the last thing I want to do is loosen this and then drag it all over the surface and start scratching it. I want to let the chemical as the tool break down that contaminant so really all i have to do when i run over it with a microfiber is i'm just picking up the chemical and those contaminants and getting them off the surface so the cleanser while successful on many portions is still not addressing these spots of asphalt these kind of tar covered this kind of tar and this car tar covered stone that is kind of again fused itself to the inside of my barrel so let's go to intensive brake dust remover. So again, water-based, again, alkaline, but we're going, we're ramping up the aggression here. So, and again, anytime we're dealing with chemicals, you'll notice, what did I do? I start at the bottom. We always go bottom up. The reason is, well, you don't want to start the top and then get streaks running down. So if this is going to pull off some contaminants, you don't want those streaks running down here if you start at the top. So again, we're always starting at the bottom and working our way up. So fairly liberal with my application, the brake dust remover. Again, giving it a dwell time. I want an opportunity for the chemical to break down the contaminants. So this way, I don't have to sweat as much 
trying to muscle the stuff out. So let's go back, grab a fresh towel, and let's see how we did here. So results so far I'm seeing, it's not really doing much as far as my fused in little piece of asphalt right here. It, it's done an okay job with some of these smaller spots of tar that are stuck in here, but you know, there's another stone actually right up here that's kind of fused into the barrel. It's not doing much with those though, but you know what it is doing a really nice job of? Getting the rest of this brake dust off of these insets inside these spokes. So. Again, nice job here, but this brings up an interesting point and kind of what I started with when at the beginning when we were out in the wash, uh, the wash bay, and that is buffers. And I'm not talking what Christian and Jose are on back there on that uh, VW. What we're talking about is a, a neutralizer because these are alkaline. So how do you bring these alkalines back to, ba back to base, back to, you know, it's basically a pH level of seven, right in the middle. And, you know, because the theory here and what's been nagging at me is, you know, as I've been here for the last year, I mean, this place, Dr. Beasley's is just, you know, dripping with science and facts. And something I learned along the way is, you know, to, you, you put a chemical on a surface to break it down and then we wipe it off. But isn't there still some of that chemical left on the surface? Is that chemical, that alkaline, chemical still sitting there, still breaking it down. And this is kind of nagging at me because, you know, I always said, oh, I'll just rinse it off with water. Well, water will, you know, A, spread it out and B, reactivate it, but water is not going to bring an alkaline back to base. So how do we go about that? I mean, are you guys addressing this? I, I mean, I mean, this is, this was something that was new to me when I came to Dr. Beasley's. I learned about this. So, you know, this is where we get into a product like pH neutralizer. So after I do my treatment, I can give it a spray down of the pH neutralizer. That will bring the alkaline back to base. This is what's called a buffer. So buffers are not only orbitals, but buffers are actually pH neutralizers as well. I'm not gonna get into this quite yet because we are not done working on this yet, but again, these, the, clean, the wheel cleanser and the intensive brake test remover, again, are both alkaline. So, you know, again, how do you bring that back to base? Do you guys address this? Is this something that you're seeing out there? Is this something that you've even thought of before? Comment below and let me know because, you know, again, this was kind of a, a worm that Jim put in my brain and has been nagging at me ever since. So I'm curious to see what you guys all think. So anyway, I got a pretty clean barrel here, back side of the spokes I'm pretty happy with. Oh, let's get the hubcap off. Come on, people, let's do this all the way. So, gotta get the hubcap off. And then, all right, so let's address these little stuck on pieces of asphalt. So where am I going from here? Any of my water-based cleansers have not been aggressive enough. So next thing I'm going to, you know, we got our handy dandy label tar remover. What this actually is, is mineral spirits. This should be, I mean, if you own a detail shop, this is on your shelf. If it's not, it should be. This is just a wonderful chemical to have around because, you know, it can solve a lot of problems in a pinch. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just address this one spot on the bottom of the barrel here to kind of test it out and see what I got happening here. So again, uh, put the mineral spirits on there and I'm giving it dwell time. And again, I know this might take a while and let's talk about dwell time. How do we extend dwell time? What, you know, cause as I say all the time, we don't want the chemical drying on the surface, right? So if we want to extend that dwell time, but we're seeing it start to dry up a little bit, what do we do? Simply just spray on a little bit more of the chemical. That way we keep it active and we keep it breaking down the surface. So as I'm looking here, I'm not seeing really any signs that anything's really going on. I don't see any kind of tar trailing off and I don't see a great deal of success here with the mineral spirits. So, time to move on to the next step in the ladder of aggression. And here I'm going, and you guys hear this all the time, you hear me refer to it as the sledgehammer. And this is panel prime. So this is actually a product that would be typically used on paint. 
Um, you know, this would basically be used, I mean, essentially I tell you, if, if it's got to come off paint safely, this product will do it. This is our sledgehammer. We don't go straight for it, but hey, it's in our tool belt when we need it. Um, so let's give Panel Prime a shot here. So again, I'm going to saturate the area and immediately I'm starting to see this brown trail of gook come off. So now I know I got something. something something's happening here. All right, so we have the brown trail of gook going there. And let's go ahead and see how we're doing there. And yes, it is breaking down. Now, it did not come off with the first attempt completely and totally. And that's okay. You know, just because it didn't come off with the first attempt didn't mean it was a fail. Not by any chance. I mean, this is what we're talking about here. We don't want to, you know, go over aggressive. We want to do just enough aggression to get the job done. So again, reapplication, multiple applications, that's fine. I got no problem with that. So again, I'm going to apply and I'm going to give it dwell time. And I'm going to even, I'm going to, knowing that I made pretty good progress last time, I'm actually going to double up my dwell time at this point. Because again, I don't need to sit here and waste product either. Spray, wipe, spray, wipe. All I'm doing is wasting product. I want to just to sit on the surface long enough that it can break down the contaminant enough that little, that, that little stone will finally pop off, again, without me having to break out like a flathead screwdriver or something silly like that to get it off and then you end up damaging the finish. So again, I want to extend the dwell time, I give it another spritz, no big deal. You know, and I'm just going to sit here and again, I can see the tar trailing off. So I know it's doing its job, I just got to wait for it to work. So I know what someone's going to say, and that's going to be, well, you can always bust out some acid, you know, and really hammer at it. And you know, personally, I prefer to use products that are not going to disfigure me. Uh, that's my personal preference. So again, if I can use a product safely, you know, uh, I, I would rather go that route. Uh, and then it's something that could potentially, if it went sideways, would, uh, I don't know, disfigure my hands for the rest of my life. So, you know, again, I have no problem sitting here with some panel prime and letting that go. Now, there is one other possible solution we could go to, and that's thinner. We could go the paint thinner route here. Uh, that's risky, you know. Uh, you could do a little dab on a towel, and you just kind of work it into that spot, and that's something that certainly can be a solution from time to time, but again, you know, I know panel prime is safe. I know panel prime is not going to go through the clear coat that is on this uh, is on this wheel. So, you know, again, where what's your comfort level? You can break out the thinner. It might go a little bit faster, but is your you know risk versus benefit you know ratio getting a little out of whack at that point? So, uh, again, we're still working here. I can still see that that brown gook trailing off. So again, it's just doing its thing. So we'll just keep on going at it and keep on applying. And I'm going to go, we got other spots here and here, so I'm going to start focusing on the whole wheel and not just the one spot because I can see that we are nearly complete. So what I'm going to do again is coat this, because we got these little tar spots all over the barrel. I'm going to go ahead and coat the entire barrel with panel prime just to get everything breaking down so we can get this clean. And then once we have got all the contaminants off the barrel, I expect panel prime to be the last step here as it's breaking down all these contaminants. You can see all the uh, brown gook trailing off here, here, all over the place. So once this is complete, I'll come back with the pH neutralizer. That is our buffer. That's two advantages of using that product. Number one, that's going to bring any of those alkalines that might be left on the surface, it's going to bring those back to neutral. It's going to bring those back to a pH level of 7. The other thing that pH neutralizer is good for is actually removing caustic chemicals from the surface. So, I mean, if you are going to go with something a little bit not more gnarly as far as your chemical solution, you know, you want to be able to pull that off the surface before you coat it. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. All right, I want to show you guys something. I just screwed up. 
And I want to show you why you don't get impatient and you just let the chemical do the job. So, there was one of those little rocks fused in right there. And, as, and I felt it going over the surface. I was like, ah, let me just, it felt like it was loose. So let me just pull it off. And what happens when I used physical force instead of waiting for my tool to do the job for me? I got a little ants in the pants. And what happens? I just scratched my rim. So again, perfect lesson. Learn from others. Let your chemical do the job for you. You start getting physical with it and you want to yank this stuff off, you're going to end up damaging your finish. So I'm going back again and I'm doing another application of panel prime. And I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to wait for the chemical to do the job for me to break down the contaminant. Okay, so I've gone through and completed our uh, panel prep step. Again, I had to go to the sledgehammer. I had to go to our most aggressive solution to get the uh, uh, most stubborn contaminants off the barrel of this wheel. So again, I asked this question, do you buffer? You know, and I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna do it because again, this is something that's been nagging me in the back of my head. So we have applied alkaline cleansers and, and other items. So we're gonna go ahead and bring those back to a pH level of seven, so we can stop that process of those alkaline cleansers breaking down. Well, they're supposed to break down contaminants, but again, it's just. It's something that ever since Jim mentioned it to me, it's been kind of nagging me in the back of my head. Like, is that stuff, are those cleansers, those alkaline-based cleansers in there, even though I wiped them off the surface, there's something still there. So is that still sitting there eating away? And how do we stop that? You know, and then so you stop it by using a buffer, you know, something like a pH neutralizer. So again, fairly simple use of this product. It is spray, it is wipe. So we're gonna go ahead, I got it sprayed all over the barrel and I'm just gonna wipe it down and voila, we have a nice clean barrel that has now had all those cleansers neutralized so they're not gonna continue to eat away at the finish. All right, so barrel's nice and clean. Let's check out the face. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So the face of the wheel. Now, my personal theory when I'm doing the face of a wheel is unless I have to get super aggressive, I'm gonna do everything spray on the towel and then apply to the wheel. And the reason is, I got the barrel all nice and clean. So if I start spraying, you know, Scarface uh, style, get uh, Carlito's way on this thing, uh, all of that is gonna end up on the back of the barrel, which I'm gonna have to wipe down again. And like I said, I'm not dealing with a whole lot of contaminants up here. They're pretty much just dirty with road grime and stuff like that. So I'm simply gonna start off with wheel cleanser. So you're always going to want to find a point of reference. Anytime you're working your way around the wheel, if you got one of those, you know, machines where you can work the wheel and it's on the little rollers, that's nice to have. But if you don't, generally what I recommend, you start at the stem, at the valve stem. So that's always my point of reference, where I start and where I'm going to finish from so I know where I'm at with my wheel. So again, I'm just going to go over the wheel. And really all it is is some road grime, road dust, that sort of thing. I'm not running into, luckily, any of that tar or any of that asphalt that I saw on the barrel, I'm not seeing out here. I am seeing a little curb rash though. And I know that is not from me because I've never parallel parked this car. So anyway. That's a conversation for another time, right? But again, just being thorough and making sure I got everything cleaned up here because I do intend on coating this wheel 
And if I want that coating to perform as advertised, I need to make sure my preparation is up to snuff. So I've worked my way across the spokes. Now I'm gonna do in here, I get this inner rim and make sure I got that all nice and clean. And that's always what I do. I mean, that's what a detailer does. You find your process and you stick to it. So I always start in, you know, with the spokes, go outside of the rim, that's interior part of the rim, then I'll go around the lip of the rim, and I'll finish up right around the hub and the lugs. And one of the reasons I like to finish up on the lugs is because that's an area that typically carries a lot of, a lot of junk. A lot of stuff can get caught in there. So what I don't want to do is bring contaminants out from here and spread them all over the spokes. So the spokes I go to first, that's kind of aesthetically more, most important to me. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm a little bit dry here, so I'm going to go ahead, give myself another spritz of wheel cleanser. And so that I can get in to these lugs. Now, of course, there's all sorts of specialized brushes and that sort of thing if you want to get into building up your arsenal of accessories but I'm just trying to keep this at a pretty basic level using tools that you would have available to you you know that's why we have the mineral spirits out here that's why we have this paint thinner out here so there are things that you can go and do if you get in a pinch and you don't have the chemical there at hand but again if you notice I didn't even go to this Thinner makes me tremendously nervous because again you can start to damage you can start to dull the finish So had I not been successful with panel prime I would have gone to this but generally if I don't have to I'd, I'd rather not so again here So I'm pretty happy with how my wheel looks I'm not particularly thrilled with the curb rash, but there's nothing I can do about that right now. So again, clean wheel, but the question is, so I put an alkaline wheel cleanser here. Are we done? Are we through? How do we know that that cleanser has stopped working? This is the question. So once again, I'm going to get myself a fresh towel. And I'm going to grab myself some pH neutralizer. I'm going to be fairly liberal on my towel. And again, you'll see, I'll go over the spokes starting at the valve stem. And I'm just going to kind of go over everything again with that neutralizer. And I'm bringing any remnants of that wheel cleanser, that alkaline wheel cleanser, I'm bringing that back to base to a pH of seven. So again, go to the inner lip now that I've done the spokes. Coming around to the valve stem, and I'll up to the outer rim. Make sure I got that all clean, and then finally I'm gonna finish up and the wells for the lug nuts. Make sure I got all that cleaned out. So, there you go, folks. We have a nice, clean, and neutralized Subaru stock wheel ready for some Nano Resin MX. Okay, so now it's time to coat the wheels. Um, you know, I'm going to be using a Dr. Beasley's coating because, well, that's who I work for. Um, one thing you'll notice with Dr. Beasley's, though, you won't find a dedicated wheel coating. Uh, and that's because it's more about what is the substrate. So this is painted clear coat. So whether that paint is on that hood or on a trunk or on your wheel, we're going to treat it with the same coating because our coatings are rated up to 1500 degrees. So. Uh, I, my choice for this wheel is our Nano Resin MX. Um, I love it because it has a nice warm gloss to it, so I think really plays well, especially when you have metallics. 
Uh, like uh, this is a little bit, got a little bit of metal flake in this finish. So I think that plays well with the metallics. Um, also, that is a uh, seven year coating too. So you're gonna definitely get some uh, 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 great durability out of that. So uh, as with, just as if you're doing it on the hood or anywhere else, we start with the paint coating builder. So uh, you'll notice the, again, everyone's gonna have their own process. So this is the one that I've developed. So when it comes to the builder, I'm gonna spray both the face and the barrel. Uh, this is a simple spray and wipe product. So basically I'm just gonna get it all over the place and then just wipe it all down. And then I will come back uh, and we'll flip it around and we'll go coat the barrel first and then we'll finish up on the face. Again, I always like to finish on the face of the wheel first because that's the public facing side. So that's what I wanna do last because I want perfection there. The last thing I wanna do is coat, get through the whole process on the front, go to the back and then come back to the front and realize I got a drip or a high spot, something like that. So I want the front to be last because I want that fully dialed in. So, paint coating builder. And then I'm gonna turn around to the barrel. And what'll be really a lot of fun and quite an interesting experiment is when we switch out wheels and I run another summer and we'll see how much easier it is to clean when I get these back in here next winter. My guess is we're not gonna need most of this rack. My guess is we're gonna be at a simple wash, agitate, and that's gonna be the end of that. So when it comes to the uh, builder, we want to level it out. So that for the barrel, I am going to use a block. So again, here when I'm starting, when I'm doing anything, I always like to start at nine o'clock. I don't have the valve stem as a reference here on the, ba in the barrel. So whenever I don't have a point of reference, I always kind of start at nine o'clock. So I know where I start and I finish at. So again, I'm just going here and just leveling that out, making sure I got even coverage all the way around the barrel. And so I start going around the circumference and now I'm cutting across the barrel again, kind of a long form crosshatch. And then it finally on the outside of the rim. So, when it comes back to the spokes now, here's where I like to do something different. Obviously a block, not the easiest thing to work with here. So here is where I'm actually just gonna take just a suede and I actually like to wrap it around my fingers. One or two fingers, however you can get it done. And so that way I can kind of move it around and I have much more dexterity. Oh, valve stem. Let's start at the valve stem so we know where we start and where we finish. So again, just like I always like to do, I like to start with the spokes. And I'm just gonna level this out, making sure I got complete and even coverage. Now into the inner lip of the rim. Back to the valve stem, the outer lip of the rim. And then finally into the lug nut wells. Perfect, all right, builder has been applied.
Now I generally do want to give, I like to give Builder a little bit of time to set up. A couple, you know, half a minute, a minute, maybe two minutes tops, but conveniently, it's already, we've chewed up that time working from the back to the front, we've already used up that time. So, now we are ready to go to applying the coating itself. So again, I'm going to flip it back to the barrel. And just to take a second, I just remembered that I got to get the back end of the spokes too. I forgot to level those off. So we're going to go ahead and level the spokes, the rear side of the spokes off. And there we go. Okay. So, coating now. So here's where I'm going to grab a fresh suede, put it around my block. Get my Nano Resin MX. So I'll prime my block, I, you know, four, five drops down the middle, one at each corner. That's what I like to do. As 10 different people, you get 10 different answers. So again, starting at nine o'clock, and I'm just kind of running it down the center line of the barrel. Because that way I can do, it's kind of like boxing out when you're on paint and you box out your area, you run that center line down and then you're pulling off that center line as you're coating that hood or whatever it is. Same idea here, I've laid down that center line of product. It's starting to start back again at nine o'clock and now I'm, gonna, I'm pulling off that center line of product and pulling it to the edges of the barrel. So this way I can also work the contours of the barrel that the block won't necessarily form to when I'm going around the circumference of it. When I'm crossing across the barrel like this, I'm able to get into these little more intricate valleys in the rim, or in the barrel rather. So again, starting at nine o'clock at the back of the spokes. You know, another thing, if you guys have those uh, coating savers, those microfiber kind of covered little blocks, those things are phenomenal. You're absolutely uh, welcome and encouraged to use those. And one thing I'm going to do here is just get around this. Because again, block is a little bit too big to get in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay down right across there. All right. So now that's our Nano Resin MX on our barrel. And go ahead and take a nice fresh microfiber. No slivers, nothing caught in there. And again, starting at nine o'clock, buff it off. And one thing I can tell you, just from putting this microfiber on it, when we were going through our cleaning process, you know, the barrel's not finished to the same level as the face of the wheel. So one thing I'm noticing right away is that, you know, there's like these kind of ridges and it's kind of textured in here and it, and it was a little bit grabby on the microfiber when we were going through our, uh, our cleaning uh, stages of this process. And I can tell you right now how this microfiber is just running over this stuff so much more smoothly and it's not grabbing it at all. So, you know, again, I already seen the benefits of the coating and it's only been on there about two minutes or less. So beauty. All right. So we got in coated barrel. Let's turn it around to the face of the wheel. Repeat this process. So again, this is where if you have one of those microfiber flexible coating savers, it would be quite handy to have. I am going to use what I have at hand, which is this suede and my fingers and my detailing gloves. So, prime up my suede a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever. And starting at the valve stem, and I'm just going to start on the spokes. And again, it's just giving me a little bit more 
area, oops, to work with. Reprime that. Just a little bit more. My fingers are a bit more malleable than a foam block. So again, I'm just gonna work around in my process on the spokes, get both sides. And then, go ahead, so I got my spokes. I wanna get the outsides of the spokes, so I'm gonna go ahead, get the face of the spokes now. And then pull into the inside of the barrel. Again, kind of just going over it again. I like to double up on some of the spokes. Again, just making sure I got even coverage of product. Reapply some MX. And I'm just doing a couple of drops here when I'm reapplying. I mean, I got the suede is pretty well primed. Just throwing in a couple extra drops. And back to the valve stem. So now, reload. A couple more drops. And get the outer part of the rim. Coating over this very nice curb rash right here. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna let that one go anytime soon. All right, and now, finally, let's finish up and get inside those lug nut wells and around this center cap. All right. And we have our face coated now. Woohoo! So, I'm gonna let me go ahead and cap my Nano Resin MX, bring back out my buffing towel, and again, I'm gonna start at the valve stem and work my way around. I'll, use, I'll do the spokes first, and then I'm gonna come around, do that inside, inner part of the, the rim, and then finally finish up on that outer part of the rim, and, well, and then finally the lugs. But, I mean, one thing I'll tell you about MX and why I chose it for this particular application was I felt like, especially for the effort that we're gonna have to put into it, this was the longest durability that we were gonna get. I mean, I could have gone Nano Resin Pro here, but if any of you have worked with Nano Resin Pro here, you know that it's a little bit of a bear when it comes to takeoff. And that's sitting there when you're on a flat panel. If you're trying to do takeoff on a wheel, you know, that's a different animal altogether. It creates a, a new and different challenge. So, you know, for this purpose, you know, are you gonna get people that wanna put pro on wheels? Absolutely. But generally, you know, for ease of install, I mean, MX hits such a nice balance between performance and gloss. Because remember, MX, is part of that nano resin range where you can get some film build, legitimate film build, and you're getting into that range of candy gloss. So, you know, the one thing about MX though, it still has some solvent in it. And that solvent that's in MX, you know, the solvent actually doesn't do anything for performance of the product to help protection or anything like that. That solvent's there to make our lives easier. Uh, it's, it's to thin it out and make it easier to apply and easier to take off. Uh, and in this case, that's what I wanted. Something on the easier side to apply and easier to take off, but still get really impressive gloss and 
durability. All right, so there you go, folks. That is one fine looking Subaru wheel, sans curb rash. But other than that, had a great time showing you this, going through this whole process with you guys. Uh, again, I'd be curious what you have to say, particularly on the whole buffer issue. Again, this was something that, uh, uh, you know, I learned from being around Jim, from being around Dr. Beasley's. You know, when it comes to the alkaline buffers, you know, how do you stop it from working? How do you stop that from cleansing? You know, throwing some water at it wasn't going to work, you know, so we did break out our pH neutralizer to stop that process. So, uh, but anyway, very impressed with these results and, uh, you know, I'm going to be looking forward to uh, easy cleaning come next forward when I get these back on the WRX. So anyway, I appreciate you all uh, tuning in. If you have any comments, please let me know down below, comments, questions, anything. And please be sure to uh, like uh, the video, subscribe to the channel, so uh, Victor and I can keep on bringing you uh, super sweet new content like this. All right, have a great one, guys.